Oh, I love this question from Building with Logan. Can a college or university ban drone usage even if compliant with the FAA? Building with Logan, here's, here's the reality of the situation. If you are a student at a public university and you, they say, I don't want you to fly your drone, you may. this is a case where you may be technically or legally in the right but it may not be worth the fight. And you always have to ask yourself, if I decide to take up this fight, am I, you know, is it worth seeing it through? Or is this a, just a case maybe where the nail that sticks up gets hammered down as the, as the Japanese saying goes. And that's not to say that it isn't sometimes worth a fight. Sometimes it's, you go, nope, I'm right, you're wrong. This is an overreach and I am going to be the one to take this fight to its conclusion, and I will accept the consequence. And, that, and sometimes that hurts. Sometimes you get fined. Sometimes you get, maybe you get kicked out of your university. Who knows? But you may decide, I want to I want to make a stink about this. The, cool. More power to you if you decide that's something we need. We need people to do that. You just have to ask whether it's going to be you. The reality is that there are lots of cases where uh, private entities that don't have the right to regulate airspace decide they think they can regulate airspace. We've seen it with cities and towns and counties. We've seen it with homeowners associations, and we've seen it with universities. And when they do that, you have to fight them. You can, you can choose to fight them. You don't have to. Um, the truth is that only, according to the FAA, only the FAA can regulate the national airspace, which means that they cannot say, legally speaking, they, they can try, but they, can, they can't enforce a ban against flying or regulate what you can fly through their airspace. So they couldn't say no flights in our airspace. They couldn't say uh, they couldn't say flights over people are allowed on our campus. They couldn't they couldn't say that. That's the FAA's job. And, and exclusive right. But what they can say is, you are not allowed to take off or land on RC aircraft from our property. And that's where the federal government, where the FAA says that they draw the line. So they can de facto ban, take off, ban flights by banning takeoffs and landings. Since most of the time, if you're flying uh, in the university's airspace, you will also have taken off or land from the university's property. Um, so uh, that's the the reality there. The real and and they may have written if they're smart. The way they wrote the ban is to say that you can't take off and land from our airspace from our property, and now that's pretty that's pretty airtight. But if they have said no drone flying allowed on our on our airspace, technically they're wrong. And if you fight them on it, they will eventually if you'll either you'll eventually get tired of fighting and give up or lose or you'll win. You'll take it all the way to the end and they'll rewrite it to say no takeoffs and landings. And what will you have accomplished? So. There you go. Curtis Hayes. Says, is it normal to have to? Is it normal to have to use ELS power off three times bind feature even when I have a matching bind phrase? Uh, no, that's not normal. I'm going to guess you don't actually have a matching bind phrase. And if you use the three bind the three X power bind feature, once you bind, it will communicate your bind phrase to the receiver. So the receiver will then have the matching bind phrase from the controller. Yeah, I would also say the the 3x thing doesn't work if you do have a bind phrase flashed. It stops working. So that means you did not flash a bind phrase, but you thought you did. Oh, good point. I hadn't got there. Yeah, good point. Thank you, Plenty. Um, so you didn't have a bind phrase. You're saying if you flash the bind phrase, what if you put it in via the web UI? As far as I know, is if the receiver has a bind phrase in it, like in that storage spot, yeah, and yeah. I mean, I guess there's two spots, so I'm not sure how that works because there's the web UI spot and the, the in the firmware spot. But as far as I know, is at least when you flash with the but firmware it, on it and you have a bind phrase, it disables the ability to three 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 unplug bind. Yeah, it won't even go into binding if you've put a bind phrase in there. Yeah. Will it? No, it's specifically in the documentation, and like that's part of the whole okay. thing. It stops the three X binding thing. All right. Um, I, I don't know about web UI. 
Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Max Myers wants to know how much of a Patreon donation covers the monetization amount you'd lose by me using a YouTube ad blocker. Um, Max, I, first of all, thank you for a $10 donation. I assure you that, uh, frankly, like I could probably, I don't, how would I figure that number? I'm not going to put the stats on screen because I don't want to just show you guys like every little bit of my analytics just because I, I, I don't know. That just seems reckless. Blunty, how would I figure out? how much I get per month per subscriber. I would just do a division, right? Number of subscribers. No, it would be number of views, right? Okay, so if I take the number of views divided by, it's dollars per view is that I want. The amount of money I get per view is shockingly small. Um, like YouTube says I got 1.2 million views last month. Suffice to say, the amount of revenue I get per view is less than a penny. <laughs> Significantly less than a penny. Because at 1.2 million views, if I even made a penny of you, I would be freaking cleaning up. Um, so even the lowest Patreon tier of $2 gives me significant, gives me 100 times, 200 times more money than I would have gotten from your ads. Okay. So if you, if you decide to yar, sail the seas with an ad blocker, which I totally think you should not do because YouTube's terms of service say that I'm not allowed to promote the use of ad blockers. And in fact, ad blockers steal money from YouTube and creators and you totally should not use them. But if you were a person who did that and you decided you wanted to try and compensate the creator in some other way, even a, like a $2 a month Patreon would give them far more money than they ever get from your ad views. So thank you for asking that, Max Myers. Um, Zays wants to know what are some reliable battery straps? They're not, the ones I'm using are not very good. Thank you for a $5 donation, Zays. Zays, I always use rubberized battery straps. Uh, not everybody agrees with me about this. Um, a lot of times I find myself using Race Day Quads battery straps simply because I buy stuff and I, they send me battery straps. Um, to me, the rubberized one is more valuable than the Kevlar. Now the rubberized ones do wear out and they do tear. Okay. So you will go through them. If that's a big issue for you, you need to take a file and you need to just knock the edge off your carbon fiber plates just a little bit because the sharp carbon fiber can cut through them. If you really care about them not tearing, get the Kevlar battery strap. Now these have woven rubber grip, which is not quite as good as the, the full rubber surface, but still pretty good. And the Kevlar battery straps, they last a lot longer and are much less likely to tear. What I find goes wrong with the Kevlar battery straps, this also happens with the, with the regular ones, is that the, the metal buckle will kind of pull and twist sideways uh, if you buckle them too tight after they get worn. Uh, either The problem with these is that they're a lot thicker and they're a little harder to pass through if your frame is tight. So lots of companies make this exact style of battery strap. You don't have to buy the RDQ ones. I just put it up here because they that's often what I end up using because they just send me a bunch of battery straps. Now you could even go here. We've got a, this is Kevlar battery strap with Kevlar stitching. So this may be even more durable, but it, is it rubberized? Can't tell. It doesn't even look like it's got some rubberized. That's nice. It's pretty expensive though. So that's where I, that's the direction I would go with that. 